been the greatest of all time. The likes of Lauren Jackson, of course, Sandy Brondello, who is the coach. She's the head coach, but she's not here. She's coaching in the WNBA. Uh, but in her place, uh, they, the way they've set it up, Cheryl Ann Chambers, who was the coach of the year of the Sydney University Flames, uh, she will be running the show here for the Opals. But Australia need no reminding uh, about the dangers of going up against a Korea team that is very, very good. A Korea team that almost made it to Rio de Janeiro last year. Uh, they played at the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament in Nantes and came up just short of that qualification. Of course, the Opals, uh, they lost just once, but it was at the wrong time last year in the quarterfinals. And for that country, that's a huge disappointment. They expect to get to the podium uh, every time. Well, I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Mick Bett. And uh, Mick, thanks for joining us today and uh, for this tournament. And uh, as always, looking forward to hearing your comments about these two great teams and, and the rest of this tournament. Jeff, thanks a lot. And welcome, everyone. It's an opening game. You know what? It's, a, it's a, an avid fever here, isn't it? So sort of build up for two great teams coming into this tournament, being invited in, and obviously the competition rises tremendously. This team is uh, a sight to behold in terms of the, uh, the green and gold of Australia. The Koreans, obviously, deep history in this tournament going back to the 1970s. One of the early winners and uh, looking to get their name into that world championship uh, list of four developing out of this tournament. So the players uh, being introduced, Australia already out on the court and Korea are coming out as well. And obviously the, the top four teams in this tournament will qualify for the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup, which will be staged next year in Spain and uh, exciting times. And I suppose you would think for the likes of Korea, uh, this tournament has gotten a little bit harder in terms of from its uh, qualification standpoint for other tournaments because now you've got what can only be described as, as a, a giant in the shape of Australia and also a New Zealand Toll Ferns team that on their day can, can compete against anybody. And we're going to have uh, the national anthems now. We're going to have a pause for the national anthems being played for both teams for Australia and Korea.
Okay, so the national anthems have been played and now the players uh, from both these teams will meet at midcourt. And also the coaches will exchange uh, greetings as well. Of course, Paul Gordas and uh, Olaf, Olaf Long, uh, the assistants for Australia and the head coach, Cheryl Chambers. Here's the referees for today's game. And the players will now have about two and a half more minutes before we have the opening tip. So there's no greater honor, really, uh, if you're in Australia um, playing basketball to play for the national team. I can tell you that right now. Uh, having covered these for, for all of uh, the last couple of decades anyway. And here you see Tessa Levy. She was in that Olympic team last year, as well as Laura Hodges, uh, as well as Tolo. And, uh, you know, there's a, a familiar face in that roster. She goes by the name of uh, Belinda Snell. She's come back. She didn't play at the Olympics, but she's come back. And, and great to see her back as well, Jeff. I mean, I think you were uh, surprised to see her on the, on, the, on the roster, thinking she might have retired two years ago. But I think you got, you got that clarified pre-game. She played for Cheryl Ann Chambers at Sydney U last year. And uh, we'll be hoping to uh, keep this going, this run of uh, caps for herself. There's the Korean team there Jeff you've probably seen him play more than I have I did see him play back in 14 in the world championships in Turkey um, they I saw him practice yesterday I think this team might be the best shooting team in the whole tournament they uh, really do shoot the lights out and if the Australians are half asleep in the opening game they may get caught out a couple of times in this game well they have had the early start but usually the Australians are up bright and early they don't sleep in like the Spaniards. Or me. <laughs> or you. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good game. I think the first game of the tournament, always a lot of nerves. And this is a big, big game for both teams. You know, both teams possibly uh, looking to get medals at the end of this tournament. So they know they've got intentions that are very, very high. The expectations are up there. They've both been in training camp for a long, long time. And... Uh, it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting match. And there you see the, the matchup highlighted. Mariana Tolo on the right there. The, the mainstay of this team probably now for the next, uh, I would say, five to ten years possibly. And Jisoo, pa Park Jisoo there. Yeah, Park Jisoo. We remember both of these. You know, what's really interesting is the reason why we wanted to highlight these players, not only because they're good, but because when they really kind of had their, their big moment. Cheryl Chambers there, the coach of the year we mentioned in the WNBL. Uh, and Su Dong Chul, the coach of Korea, will be getting a look at him. There he is, the bespectacled coach. But talking about Park Ji Su and talking about uh, Mariana Tolo, it was 2014, FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup in Turkey. Uh, a youngster, 15 years of age, Park Ji Su showed up with Korea and played and was unbelievable and really just announced herself as like the next big thing in Korean basketball. And the same for Mariana Tolo. Uh, when Brendan Joyce was the coach of that team, you know, his team was up against it. They lost Liz Cambage a week before, I think it was, before the tournament. And she was one of those players that really emerged and stepped up. And uh, that Australia team went on that great run to, to, to the podium, the third place. Yeah, and, and, and they were really uh, a fired up team, as you'd expect from an Australian team. They always play hard. You can always guarantee that, mental, that mentality that's got uh, the pure grit and resilience. And that team, I remember Jeff had it, three or four youngsters, the up and coming ki kids that were coming into that team. And now they're bearing the fruits of that, of the early entry of those guys in on this international stage. Well, Tolo, Blixavs, uh, Tessa Levy, Ebzuri in that starting five, as well as Belinda Snell, which is uh, fascinating, really. I mean, obviously one of the all time great shooters. And don't forget, she's that remaining link to the, to the past the team the, the Australia Opal teams that won the FIBA Women's uh, Basketball World Cup back in 2006. Well, good afternoon everybody for just joining us here in India. It's the start of the FIBA Women's Asia Cup and uh, the game between Korea and Australia and the Opals. Uh, Blixav's unable to chase it down before it goes out of bounds and you know I think going up against Korea 
at the best of times is awkward for a lot of teams. And I'm sure that the way they pass that ball, they, they pass it in and out on the perimeter, their, their real quickness causes a lot of problems. On a red that bounced past beautifully, Ebsuri, uh, she wasn't able to control it. And Tessa Levy chased it but couldn't get it before it went out of bounds. Yeah, Ebsuri did well there, read it, read it perfectly and, and prepared to give up a body too. I think she got a little bit of scrape on this floor, just pointing the floor out. There were a few uh, eyebrows raised about the slickness of this floor yesterday in practice and see how that develops. Well, Tessa Levy, this is where she shines in the open floor and she pulls it back. So interestingly, Park Jisoo not in the starting lineup and Belinda Snell comes right out. Yeah, wonderful. And drills a three. A beautiful jab step from Snell. Just uh, made the defense go back a, a slight inch or so, and then that gave it a space to open up. So you've got Park Haijon Bay. You've got Im, who's shooting it there. And that's starting five for Korea. Tessa Levy. And now Snell puts up another one. She's not shy. And, you know, the interesting thing, uh, speaking to Jan Sterling, who is the kind of runs the show now for Australia, performance-wise, everything, making decisions. You know, talking about Coach Sandy Brondella, she's opened the door to everybody. Nobody's ruled out. If you want to play and you play well in the league and you get invite, you're you're still in there. Oh, interception, and this will be Kim putting it up and in with the left hand. So Australia's uh, telegraph pass by Levy. Yeah, and it's turned enough. into two you know points. Snell didn't get back on defense there. So maybe an element of Belinda Snell just needs to get a little more into this game in terms of the speed. That's a great pass. Oh, Snell. Beautiful play to Tolo. Uh, but Tolo doesn't finish. Yeah, well worked offense there from the Opals. I like that. Just get layups whenever you can. They're the easiest shot in the game, which should be. And pass back out to the perimeter. Snell getting down the ground. And no, excuse me, Park did start. I was I was wrong. So Park Jisoo in the game number 19. And the ball goes back out. So Park has missed. Now Blixavs has it. Snell for three. And front and back of the rim stays out, but she goes after it, follows the shot. Ebsery has it. Here's Snell again, and she uncorks another three. Yeah, a little more space for Belinda Snell there. Two of four. She's taken four three-pointers. We've only played two minutes, 30 seconds. She is not shy. I think you talked about her shooting prowess. I don't think she's seen a bad shot in her life. Well, you remember the three-quarters of the length shot that she hit. I think it was against Brazil at the London Olympics. Yeah, absolutely. Every day in practice, she probably said. <laughs> and tough move, but bumped out of bounds. And now Tessa Levy brings it back for the Opals, and Snell gets that respect because of those threes. Well, that's a good goes, foul. Goes right around it. Kim Dan B just chased her off the three-point line here. Look at this. Again, Snell yeah. showing Ooh. the range. Almost got a toe on the line there, but did very well to keep that toe off the line. Timeout from Korea. Good call. You know, just because she's kind of the, the woman of the moment now, the lady of the moment, Belinda Snell, just let me say, let's go back 11 years ago in Brazil, FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup taking on Brazil in the semifinals. Australia backs against the wall, third quarter. Who is it that really sparked their comeback? You know who it was? It was Belinda Snell. You didn't have to. She is lead you. genuinely one of the unsung heroines of this uh, uh, Opals program. And you've got the Lauren Jacksons, you've got the Penny Taylors, you've got the Christy Herrers, you've got all these incredible players, Jenny Steeles, you've got all these players all these coaches but belinda snell really for me has that real special because if she doesn't have the game that she had against brazil they would not have won that world title jeff and i'm gonna give you something else too you talk about you've seen these guys play two decades now you talked about there's uh the, it's interesting that long as uh, uh sandy brandella's husband the assistant well you know it's drawing up it's, the plays it's splitting up the offense and defense i think you, you spoke to the uh, japanese coach yesterday the head coach uh and you talked about him being assistant, his main role being the offensive coordinator. Yeah. And that is now how you split your, more and your more. assistant coach. Yeah, and absolutely right. I feel it's a good way of involving assistant coaches rather than just the uh, the yes man watching. But going back to Belinda Snell, she's hit both threes in the six points they've got so far. Her impact on this team 
is on the court and off the court. The veteran status that she brings around the hotel, in the training practices every morning, you know, it just has rubs off on these young kids. Bringing her to this tournament, the leadership value is worth 10 points every game, I'm sure. And Six already. And remember, when she was uh, hitting the heights, you know, back in 2006, most of these players were well, children. Yeah. <laughs> they were in their young teens or, or even, you know, even younger from that standpoint. So they really look up to her, no doubt about it. Tessa Levy. Of course, they play against her in the WNBL as well. Ebsery, she goes baseline. Snell again, and an air ball right into the hands of Tolo, and Park Ji Su wow. just, well, she well, joins the SWAT team. Welcome to the Asia Cup, <laughs> Mariana Tolo. You're not going to get it all your own way. Well, the move inside, and the foul. That's a tough call, too, you know. Uh, Blixoff just kept her ground. There's Snell's shot short. Look at this block. Park says, not in my park. Where does she go wrong here? Who, Tolo? Tolo. Nowhere. Just You just got to maybe pump fake. She'll know next time. Sometimes getting your bl shot blocked is the best thing can happen because you know the defense is going to come after your shot. So you just set her up next time. So Korea at the line. We have a start for the Koreans, Jeff. I just feel that... Uh, Playing a team like Australia with the defensive intensity they can apply, they're just not quite in their rhythm yet. Well, Bay was uh, short on the first and makes the second. And Blixavs uh, leaves the contest and coming in. Well, that means they've gone, they've gone small ball, haven't they? Four, four shorts and uh, Tolo out there. And Snell plays high post here, so the multi dimensional Belinda Snell. And she was replaced by her sister in law, in fact. Yeah. Tolo and right off the bench and Cummings drills well, it credit to Belinda Snell she set the back screen to get Cummings open wide open really Jeff by the time Korea get their rhythm they could well be out of this game because Australia will shoot the ball they'll open themselves up they'll create chances for themselves and Korea just all out of sorts, passing-wise, dribbling-wise. I don't think they've taken an open jump shot yet. Now Korea get in into Bay. And Australia, impressive start. Bay gets inside. Goes down. Look at the pressure. Look at the pressure on the ball. And usually they're going to call that a travel, aren't they? If she's down and gets up. Well, it could have been a foul. Could have been a reach. The referee's going to say that's the way we want to let this game go intensity-wise. That's fine. But you're right. She was on the floor, moved her feet. Kelsey Griffin getting off the bench. She'll be coming in for Australia. Ebsery. She goes baseline. And uh, her pass intercepted. Yeah, she wanted to hit Cummings in the corner. Nothing inside, that's for sure. And sends pass over to Park Anna. Uh, Park Anna steps out of bounds. You think this court is so big, really, and yet how many times in the modern game do players step out? Jeff, you think back in the old days. How many more and more. In oh, fact. exactly right. And you know why? Because the first pivot, the foot goes backwards usually for players instead of forward. Late. Now Korea bring it back. And back to back Turner was there for the Opals. Indeed it was. Parkana gets it to Park Jisoo. Well, a complete mismatch there for Park Jisoo. Just couldn't uh, make the most of it. Easy shot in the end. And nice pick set by Laura Hodges. I'll tell and you what, Jeff. The referees took a good look at that one. I wonder if she'll get away with that again. That, was, that looked like a moving screen. And that's probably the most called <laughs> yeah. uh, infraction in basketball these days is the moving screen.
And the referees have to get themselves warmed up into this tournament too, so they'll be uh, looking to make their mark at some point. Great crossover and a yeah. beautiful pass too. Sim doing a good job getting the ball to Bay, and she puts it up in the lane. Australia keeping the pressure on. Here's the pass there from Park into Bay. And nice little uh, dish and goes to penetration down the lane that you can't really give up as a guard, as a guard defensively. That's three turnovers in a row for the uh, Australians. Good D that time from coming. Ebsery. She gets bumped. Coming comes right outside, puts it up, and a little bit too far. Now, Eam pulls up, and she's short, and Griffin goes up and brings it down. Yeah, no offensive rebound in presence at all. Oh, look at the tenaciousness, tenaciousness of, uh, of Mansfield is coming to the game, just pushing it right up the floor. And she is fouled. I just wonder if she didn't see anybody picking her up early enough. You know, when the, the, the most important thing on a fast break is stop the ball. Nobody came to Mansfield. She pushed it ahead a little more. So Ebsery takes a seat. Blick Sives back in. Mansfield, a little shake, a little bake. She hands it off to Hodges. She gets it back. And that was short. Uh, good defense from Park, though. Has uh, managed to be a presence against the uh, shot from Mansfield and get the defensive rebound. And Sam. Well, the uh, Australians know they're in a game right now because the Koreans are nice and settled. And the pass to Hodges. And the ball goes out and goes back over to Korea. Tough shot for Laura Hodges on the move. Very good. Here's the move here from uh, Simsung Young. Just a little crossover. There, and a little 15 foot up. It's a good shot down zone here for the Australians. Him. Oh, she brings some rain, but it was short. That was launched, wasn't it? That was up in the sky somewhere. And Australia got a hand on it. So that'll, that was Mansfield. Would have been better at letting it go. Yeah, good call, Jeff, because there was no pressure on Mansfield to... Uh... But she had her back to the defender. Yeah, she yeah. didn't know. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, as a player, instinctively, you're not going to let it go ever. So Vey gets it on the inbounds. Over to Sim, who's just at the jumper. Korea can take the lead with a three here. Park steps inside the arc. And Blick sides and good, good shot to punch his egg wide open. Zell. Inside. Oh, beautiful play by Australia. It's finished by Griffin. So keep your eye on that one, Jeff. That's Laura Hodges. Was it Griffin against uh, Park? There's a serious size difference at the three spot now for Australia against Korea. Well, Griffin didn't even look challenged at all there. She no. just took it straight up, just backed her in. And Sam gets inside, follows up her miss, and foul called on coming. It's a tremendous move from Sim. Just uh, realized that she wasn't getting the shot going the direction she was going, just jumped inside, taking a bit of a bash there. Snell and Tolo coming back into the game. Well, you got to love with the Australians. What's that? The, maybe the eighth, ninth substitution? Well, watch this. The effort you were talking about from the guard. And uh, coming just kind of stepped in well, stepped in there. You the know, end. and it's a tough foul to get, isn't it? it You're is. going for the ball and collision. The referees see the, the Korean girl got there first slightly. Therefore, the foul goes against you. And on the baseline, and Bay. Tough Holds. shot. What a tough shot. You know, it had to come out of her hand quickly. And a uh, nice little touch. Australia moving the ball well. Tolo, low block. 
Mansfield, oh, beautiful bounce pass. Look at him passing it for three seconds. Oh, that's unfortunate. Pretty basketball. That was very, very nice. I like that. Mansfield dumped it down to Griffin. Griffin finds uh, Tolo. That was a quick. Thought it was a quick three, but wow, I think Tolo had started off in the lane. That was the problem, wasn't it? And yeah. by the time it got back to Mansfield, then passed on one more time. She literally set up camp in there, I presume. Yeah, she had put up a campfire. You can see the smoke coming up. She's not allowed to camp out down there. So this game is uh, it's close as anticipated. Two international heavyweights, really. Ball goes out of bounds, historically anyway. Korea may have dipped a little bit in recent years. Yeah, it's not great point guard play from Sim there because the pass put her teammate right on the sideline and under a lot of pressure. And Snell, she was short. It's like a 6-3 pointer Belinda Snell's taken. I don't think she's taken a shot in the lane yet. Park ji oh, fouled by Griffin. Yeah, and I think Griffin's just telling herself, Kelsey Griffin just slapping herself over the little head, patting herself on the head. So not a great foul, not a great move to go and try and block that shot. Park ji soon was uh, fading away. Now checking into the game is uh, Kim. played uh, her college basketball in Indiana for the Hoosiers. Yeah, well, she comes from the Hoosier State from Indianapolis. And now it's a knotted. So those two free throws and we've got ourselves a tie game. And the bump Griffin great job and draws the foul on Kim. Han Buell, who has just checked into the game. You know, unfortunately for Kim Han Buell, she's, she's in good position, but uh, the, every time you make that move for someone like Griffin, you're going to lean into your defender, and any contact, the referees see it. You extend on the way, you keep going through, and the referees will just give an easy foul for you. How do you combat it? You just get ahead of the, the dribbler, don't you? Defensively, get down low and just make sure you block off a path. So both free throws put it back up. So without Sandy Brondello, those two right there, Long and and at least uh, Cheryl Chambers, Cheryl Chambers rather, the decision, the brain trust along with Doris, three-pointer, and Korea has taken the lead. And once again, it's Sim. Wow, I don't think they were expecting that in the uh, scout report, Jeff. They gave us so much space. There's that little pin down. Well, Tolo got the position. She just had, did not finish. Well, we got a mismatch inside here. Can they get the ball to Park? Ove. Okay. Park Jisoo, Griffin holds her own. That's good defense for Griffin. You know, one thing Griffin didn't want to do is let it come to the middle, keep her on the baseline. Mansfield, boy, she's a little, uh, little wizard with the ball, isn't she? But Griffin not able to finish against Park Ji Soo. Park Ji Soo is just immense. Yeah, you know, offensively. Look at the offensive rebounds as well. Yeah. Offensively, you want to make an offense that takes Park away from the hoop. Sim gets fouled going to the hoop. She's done very well trying to get that pe penetration breakdown at the guard position. You know, if you're running offenses, Jeff, and you've got a, a player like Park Ji Soo on, on the defense. You want to run the offense that brings her away from the basket. You don't really want to be taking shots where she has to challenge your shot. So can you find a mismatch somewhere else on the floor? And if you look on the floor, you've got Griffin 9, and you've got Blickhoff's 15. And you get the shots for them, because you know uh, Park's going to guard Tolo. So maybe next time down the floor, we might see post moves uh, into Griffin or Blickhoff's. Well, just four seconds on the game clock. So Australia had to get it up the floor quickly. Griffin has it. Mansfield, she's got to chuck it. She does, but it's too hard. 
So Korea, they fell behind early, but they have stormed back to take the lead at the end of the quarter. And you can see that three from Sim was big time. It's the Koreans on top, 15 to 13. There's one more look at it. And uh, what do you think? Alarm bells ringing down in Melbourne? Perhaps it's early. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff. This, this seeing no more than they would have expected. They know they're in a tough game, and, and they've got it. There's no doubt about it. Now, can the Australians wear them down? I think for the Koreans, the problem is going to be making shots down the down the uh, down the death against the the heavy pressure that Australia will be able to apply in the fourth quarter. So that will be it for me. Can they be in the game in the fourth quarter? Korea will be a test for them here. For the Australians, they know they've just got to go through the numbers, keep the subs going, make sure they get the right five on the floor. Can they exploit uh But we're in Bengaluru, India, and it's the uh, opening game of the FIBA Asia Women's Cup. And Australia, uh, thanks to the hot hand of Belinda Snell, got it going early. Led, I think it was 9-3 to three at one point, but Korea comes storming back. And uh, a couple of turnovers for Australia. You see Snell finding her range. But, you know, from what we've seen so far, Mick, you know, not too much separating these two teams. No, but, but you know, look at the quality of Korea, Jeff. They, they've been at the major tournaments many, many times now. They're experienced. They know what to expect. They come tournament ready all the time. We saw them practice yesterday. Look very, very sprightly. You know, they're ready, and the Australians are ready too. So it's going to be a game to the death. I, I think now, second quarter, you'll see more of that. See that post up there from Griffin? They'll, they'll try and isolate a mismatch in the low post. I think one of the things the Australian girls do very well is post up. They're very good at sealing bodies, getting people with uh, defenders on their backs. And uh, if you look at the big trio they got in now, Smith comes in as the th an extra body on the floor that's, that's, that's long, and, long and leggy. Might be an opportunity for Australia to, to get it going with uh, Park Jisoo taking a seat. She well, is. absolutely. They'll be throwing it inside every time now. But you got Cock in the game, number nine. And that three-pointer no good. They're going to put up their share of threes. And look at Kim. Nice work. Uh, almost. She almost gets the steal. Have they called the foul on Mansfield? No, I think it's against uh, oh, Kim, Jeff. Okay. I think she oh, must have unlucky. reached. Yeah, it is unlucky. Good hustle. She definitely knocked it away. Then she couldn't quite control it. Mansfield hands it off to Tolo. And a lefty misses. Tolo with the rebound. Oh, another nice pass from Mansfield. And this time, Tolo finishes. And like we said, there's no Park Jisoo in her way. Well, she won't be long on that bench, I'm telling you. Of, uh, offensive rebound, a little layup for the uh, big Mariana Tolo. Flick sides. Keeps putting the pressure on Kim on the perimeter. Now Bay. She's struggling to find an open shot here. Kim just drives in beautifully with the left hand. Doesn't finish. Snell goes behind her back to evade Sim. And now Mansfield puts it off the back of the iron. Yeah, poor defense from Sim So Young, really just giving up uh, an easy. Ended up being five on three for the Australians. Tessa Levy will check back in, I think, for uh, Mansfield. Again, the Australian defense. And Alana Smith plays for Tara Vandiver at Stanford. In the, the game, the number mismatch five. Inside, Jeff. There it is, Tolo. And she gets the bump. And Kim had position. But I guess the call is that she kind of uh, moved into her a little bit. Watch this. And she came in, at, in fact, she came in maybe a little bit too late and got the contact. Is that second foul on Kim? Or it third? is. Yeah, second foul on it. She's definitely keeping the scorer interested and busy. 
How long for Park back in, Jeff? What do you reckon? Another minute, 30 seconds? I mean, score's only 15-15, but... She may sit for a while. You think so? Yeah. Do you, do you think they could give up a six-point lead at this stage? Because that's where it's headed. Well, they're going to have to... Uh, I, think, I think he'll see how it progresses. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Maybe they'll, they, they've got to score, that's why. They've got to keep the scoreboard ticking, get some open shots. Bay just behind the strike. See? There you go. And Korea back in front. Had to make it, though. Had to put the ball on the floor and then create some space for herself. That'll take some pressure off the defense. This ball's going inside again. Polo sets the high pick. Snell rolls, gets it to Smith, and she shows with that reverse layup, that quality in her game. Well, Park's on her way back in. So it was just about a minute. The referee uh, coach there, not quite confident enough this five could survive. Bay backs, tries to back Snell down low, and Snell... Good job defensively, ball goes out of bounds. So Park Jisoo does indeed, as you look at the replay of Smith, look at this again. You know, you're sat on the bench the whole first quarter, you come up with your first move, a lot of confidence in that for Smith. Yeah, that's that was a tough catch yeah. on the move and scored with the reverse. It's one of those shots that can make you look pretty silly because you don't make it, but a tough shot to make. Look at his open layup, Jeff. Uh, another beautiful play, Ebsery to Tolo. That's a special play. They ran in the first uh, quarter. Get your layup. They've uh, run it second quarter too. Kim. Thanks. Kim Danby off target. Uh, Korean coach, uh, Coach Siu, just looking up to the scoreboard. Does he take time out now if they score? He may well do. That same back screen there for solo this offense for Australia just causing all sorts of problems for Korea they gotta talk it up be a bit more physical get in people's faces just in create some more intensity coming comes back in Snell's gonna take a seat Hodges also comes back in for Tolo so the Opals uh, keeping the fresh bodies out there and they've gone slightly smaller now the Opals which will which will suit the Koreans that's for sure Tell you, uh, as Levy floats in, attempts to bank one in and misses. And Smith is pretty tall, isn't she? Yeah. But you see the park effect there, Jeff. Every defensive rebound goes down her throat. Nice shot. Tough one. And a long rebound goes out to Kim. Now Sim. And again, coming with the board. Jeff, if you look at the number of offensive rebounds Korea have got in this game, it won't be many because the, the toughness defensively of the Australian team. Hodges. And Sim uh, reaches and fouls Ebsery. Jeff, they worked on the double team in the low post, the Koreans, yesterday in practice. And there you saw it, the first example of uh, coming over and just helping Park out and that double that pass into the low post. And they almost got the turnover out of it. So the teams retreat to the bench. You know, talk about the height, the size of Australia. Alana Smith, uh, 1.93 meters in height. Now here's the play where she feeds it right back see inside. The back, Watch. See the back screen top of your screen. We don't quite see it in camera because Park gets a back screen and the, and the defender setting that screen doesn't react and the wide open layup for Tolo. That's the second time they've run that up. I think they ran it back to back. It didn't work as well the second time they ran it. First quarter they ran it to perfection. So, Olaf Long and Australia uh, with the 20 to 17 lead. And look, look, look at how they post up over there. The Koreans. Where do you see Korea winning and losing this game? They've got to create 
as much momentum as the Australians can in on defense, and that will be their problem. I like the way they went to this double team action in the low post. I think Australia will have enough thing, enough uh, variation in their offense to deal with and do something else and come back to it later in the game. Uh, they can't win without Park, that's for sure. Park on the be on the f on the bench is going to be a problem, so keeping her out of foul trouble will be key, and they've got to make jump shots because they won't get many layups. Smith gets down low and Hodges uh, doesn't quite pull the string with that jumper from the line. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. She had enough time, enough space. Nice pass from uh, Smith to set her up. Now Levy goes out and Edzery comes back in. It's not really a small lineup per se for Australia. I mean, they no, it's, it's just not as tall as they can put on the floor with Blickhoffs and Tolo. This is a good post up here. This should be two points. Bay goes right at Ebsery, and Alana Smith goes up. I'm impressed by her. I really am. With Smith? Yeah, uh, yeah, Alana Smith. But I find, Jeff, you find all the Australian bigs are just everywhere. Look nice at the shot. stroke. Oh, yeah. and she nails the three right on cue. She has come out with some confidence. They just play tough. I think that's that's the key to a basketball. Just play hard under the hoop. And Clark gets blocked by Smith. She's doing it all right now. And Kelsey Griffin fouled just as she goes past midcourt. Yeah, great defense. But you know, take Griffin's play. Gets the uh, here's the three from uh, Smith. And the defense, what do they say, hands down, man down? Defense had no hands up, no, no challenge. Look at the defense there, no challenge on the shot there from uh, nine quack. And, uh, this lead is just inching ahead, Jeff. They're going to be close to a 10-point uh, lead if they're not careful in a minute, the uh, Koreans. Griffin uh, clangs the first one. Cornhusker. She's 30 years old now. She's taken the naturalized spot by Lilana Mit Mitchell. Grew up in Anchorage, didn't she, in uh, Alaska? Yep, big chill territory. It's pretty cold up there. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> Bay, now Sim again, and she takes the bump. You know, one of the things you look at the Koreans playing against this Australian defense, Jeff, how many times did the Koreans get the ball and manage to have a comfortable look at the hoop? And, and the problem is, how quickly can you get it in your hands and then get it up for a shot? And the defense is very quick to close out for the Opals. Nice play. I drew the foul out of Griffin there. That's nice play from Yim. The sideline ball here. the second team foul for Australia there for the uh, quarter is you again open look just can't quite get it that's a great pass uh, they get it to park she's not gonna oh, she's does miss it she was under a little bit of pressure still would have expected her to make that and now Esri takes the bump but they're gonna call a foul before the shot the fouls on sim and it's sim so young just not quite in great body position defensively, and uh, Ebsery spotted it, ran straight into it, drew the foul easily. She'll sit down, Jeff, as well. 13, uh, Kim Dan Beal coming to replace her. Now Kim's one of the uh, one of the veterans in this team. And. Ebsery drills the first free throw, and that lead has ballooned to eight points. Yeah, and if you take that missed layup down the other end by Park, they're the elements of the game where Korea have to capitalize, and they've lost this out of bounds, too. And 
And now the turnover goes over to Korea. Beautiful bounce pass and great hustle back by, by coming. And now look at Griffin push it. Well, you talked about a great bounce pass, Jeff. It, it was precision, wasn't it? But such a bad pass to try and catch. And that was the uh, that was the uh, result too. Another break here. Good reach from Korea to force the turnover. Now check it out. How many shots can they get open every time they catch it? Not many. Bay, they're going to post up. Ebsery, oh, an offensive foul. Oh, you'll have to tell me about that one, Jeff. I'm not quite sure. All I can think is that was a hard move. Ebsery. Watch again. Oh, it's a hook. Uh, yeah, she, right she raised hook. her yep. right elbow. Yep. Yeah. Well spotted by the referee, and uh, we've got a timeout. And the, the pressure of Australia, it does wear on you, doesn't it? And yeah. they have they have just taken it to a different level here. But Jeff, that's why they that's why they're good. That's one of the reasons why they're good. And, and you know it's credit to the the league that they play in Australia. If you have an intense, hard league, then you produce hard, intense national teams. And and really in, in terms of uh, as you look at the the highlights, this is where Australia have got it together. I mean, they've got, of course, they have players that play in the WNBA. Of course, they have players, men's players that play in the NBA. But you know what? They've also got a strong domestic league oh, yeah. for both. Yeah, and look at the they don't have a problem getting players. Well, I think most and that's of the name of the game, isn't league, it? Uh, most of this team are in that league, aren't they? I think and that's the, where they've drawn this team from. And they've got plenty of players playing in Europe and, like, as you said, the States. And they've got a deep history of veteran players that are, are now coming to the end of their careers. So this this team is the next team of group of players coming through I don't see a Lauren Jackson maybe or a Penny Taylor amongst them as being a true superstar but you never know oh yeah they're there I mean I I like I like what I see out of Smith that's for sure but yeah it's not surprising I mean she plays for Stanford and this is a, a team that is always there or thereabouts chasing uh, final four berths in, in the NCAA. Oh, look at Griffin. She just goes Ooh. right to the basket and scores with the left hand. That might be the, that might be the play of the day. Crossover near the three-point line, just out, just inside. Now the Koreans are in a bit of trouble here. She is not afraid to go to the basket, that's for sure. Him puts it up right at the line. And this time, Ebsery wisely lets it go out of bounds. I'll tell you what, Jeff. Look at this. soon gets through some, uh, through some work. Look at Griffin. Move. There's the crossover that took Park out of it and then managed to get a little lefty over her. That might just the be the play end. of the game. Yeah. Well, Griffin wide open as she set the screen coming through the lane. Tough shot from Cummings to make there. Yeah. Didn't seem to reset the shot clock there. Anyway, Ebsery. Again, she gets in the lane, puts it up, and again, uh, Griffin battles, but knocks it out to the perimeter where Park was waiting. Unfortunately for Park, she's the only real true rebounder on this team, so she, the amount of work she has to get through, boy, looks a bit tidy. Her body's gone down the plus side Come, there. Coming colliding with Park. And now the bump. Well, and that's the way the Australians play, and, and you that's the physical side you have to deal with when you're playing offensively and trying to get yourself some shots, trying to work your offense. A little nudge in the back there from Ebsery as the post up for went into that the ball went into that low post to Bay. And here it comes coming again. Pulls up with the line. Good. Yeah, tough, tough shot. I think she had Hodges just to her left. Maybe he could have dished it off, but uh, Cummings more than happy to take responsibility. There's another foul from Ebsery. Do you see it, Jeff? It was an elbow to the chest. I mean, it was, uh, that's back-to-back -back pushes from number 10, Ebsery. I'm going to get a replay of that, but that was fairly cynical. But that's the way they play D. She hits the bench pretty quickly, too, uh, with those back-to-back -back fouls. Boy, Australia just coming 
at Korea right now in waves. And Korea just aren't responding. Kim for three. That's what I'm talking about, open Jays, Jeff. They've got to fall for them. Well, and it's not the fact that she made the shot tougher because when she caught it, she had a, a window of opportunity, but she put the weighted, hesitated, let the defense come on to her. And therefore the defense, the shot then becomes a little harder. It's that ability to have the confidence to just catch and shoot. Well, they need that free throw. They need all of them right now. They need to finish this first half strong. They're down 11. And the second one stays out, and Alana Smith goes up for another rebound for her. She gets it over to Blick size. And a little bit too long, but Alana Smith, you know, I mean, she has just got it. She, she wow. is getting to the loose balls and, and making tough shots as well. Just the work was done as the ball's in mid-flight for the missed shot. She got a position, made sure she sealed the defender. And Korea just looking for options now to get themselves back in this game. She has one and done every time. No offensive rebounds. And really, Australia with a chance to really uh, put in a couple of daggers here. Increase that lead. Alana Smith. Goes up left hand, forced it a little bit that time, but there for the follow is Blixives. Yeah, relentless, relentless. Any loose ball on the floor, it's green and yellow shirts on it every time. And, and the Koreans look a bit despondent right now. I think they're going to take a timeout. Oh, well, there's 35 seconds remaining in the first half, and Australia have Korea, it appears, on the ropes. They are going for the, for the knockout. And Clark picks it up and bounces over the backboard. And Alana Smith uh, couldn't collect it, so Korea get it back. And this time, Clark puts it down. And Blixovs ends up coming away with it. Will Australia hold it for one? They've got six seconds, five seconds. Mansfield puts it up, and the left-hander misses. So with that, you have to say impressive, impressive, impressive comeback here for the Opals. They were reeling a little bit, but they lead it 33 to 18 at the break. Well, as the players go to the changing rooms at halftime, the locker room, Australia on top 33 to 18, Mick. And it's a, uh, you know, there was a moment there where it looked like Korea, when they took the lead, you started to wonder, wow, so this is the new Australia. You know, they're going to be struggling. And uh, in that second quarter, what really is, it's, it's not the flair and the panache that really separates Australia from the other teams over the years. It's the grit. It's the hustle, it's the beating the, the opponent to the boards, the tenacity, and that's what came to the fore in that second quarter. But, you know, in some ways that is basketball though, isn't it? That is what defines true champions. You know, if you haven't got that, you will never be a winner. And that's the little things, the, uh, the people are underestimating teams. When you look at how good a team is, can you make shots, can you, uh, can you dunk, can you jump, can you rebound? But at the end of the day, if you can't get loose balls, if you cannot uh, play defense and you can't play harder than the opposition, then you don't become a, one of the great teams. But what's encouraging when you look at Australia, you know, you wonder about who, what is the new generation of Australians? We started to see it at some, you know, the 2014 
uh, FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. We saw it some at the Oceania Championship the following year. We saw it some last year. And now we're seeing the likes of Alana Smith come out, who's been terrific. Uh, we've seen Ebsery play a lot of minutes. Steph, Steph Cumming, boy, she has, you don't want to mess with her. I mean, she's a tough, she's a tough nut as well. Yeah, and I think if you look at, uh, the, you know, it's, it's a, to me, it's a lifestyle, isn't it? You go to Australia, you go to New Zealand, kids are brought up in a healthy lifestyle competition is healthy they are taught that exercise is important in life and this whole thing this whole idea of resilience and mental mental uh, strength is taught all the way from year year zero it's uh, so you, it, it's no surprise that you get these tournaments for Australia just show how much intensity and tenacity they have for, for uh, sport so I'm guessing that we're going to see in, the, in this tournament, as you look at the highlights of the first first half, uh, an Australia team that's going to evolve. You yeah, know, we absolutely. saw Snell come out, try absolutely. to calm things down early, try to take over. Yeah. And look, at, I, I talked about the effect that Belinda Snell has on any team, you know, on and off the court. That's not a problem. But now you see these youngsters coming through. And for you, Smith, with a shining light that first half, is it? It's not for a in fact, her numbers are great, but just for the energy she brings to the game. So leading, uh, leading the way at halftime, seven points for Alana Smith, seven for, again, Kelsey Griffin for Australia. Uh, Kelsey Griffin, we haven't really spoken about her, but she has been terrific, really going hard to the hole. Melinda Snell has the six points, and... Uh, five for Mariana Tolo, but Alana Smith also those five rebounds to go with those seven points. So tremendous uh, addition to this Opals team. And for for Korea, uh, leading the way, Sim has the six points and, and Bay has the eight. So we're at halftime. Be sure to stick around for the second half. It's Australia leading at 33 to 18.
33 to 18, Australia on top of Korea here at halftime. The first game of the FIBA Asia Women's Cup. And just as a reminder, the top four teams uh, will qualify for the FIBA uh, Women's Basketball World Cup that will be staged next year in Spain. And my understanding is that uh, there's a strong likelihood, I don't know if it's been officialized yet, that it will be in Tenerife. So in the Canary Islands, and you can't imagine a better destination to do anything than to go to Tenerife. No, no, it's very true. It's one of the best, uh, one of the best sunshine resorts we know of. Absolutely, fantastic. One of the Canary Islands. So uh, Korea, you know, we expect them to be quick, perhaps, and and to really have that perimeter game working. The passing, maybe not quite as quick as we expected, but again, some of that might have to do with uh, the way Australia were playing. Yeah, and if you look at the uh, the model that these some of these Asian countries put together, Jeff, one of the things they do is you technically a lot of these players are, are very good. Um, but what sort of competition do you get day in, day out? That's that's the uh, when it comes to tournaments like this, you have to feel that the Australian League has probably got a better domestic league than the Korean League. Therefore, you say that day in, day out, these, these girls, these players are, are getting better competition. And it's showing right now, 16, 15 point lead at halftime. It is it's a gulf of difference in that second quarter. And when the Australians turned on the gas, and it, the scoreline changed very quickly. So Australia's biggest run was uh, 13 points, 13 0 run. They went from trailing. What was it? It was 17-16. 17, 17-16. 17, so they were and late, that was the jump 29, shot. 17. That was the jump shot on the foul line One, two, three, where Pat was on the bench. We said, "Oh, they need some points." Exactly. Well, they got two points, but that was the only basket they got for the rest of the quarter. And now that now the strong start to the second half becomes imperative for Korea. Yeah, and you know what? Australia just have to pick off the uh, Koreans bit by bit, little bit. They'll make mistakes. They'll miss shots. They'll uh, overstretch themselves trying to get back in the game, and that will just play into the hands of this uh, Opals team. So, Ebsery's going to inbound at the Mansfield to start the second half, and Belinda Snell gets her first touch. Lixab is also number 15, and being defended by Sim. Yeah, no, there's no reason for Sim to get beaten that easily on the dribble. Now, she did stay with uh, Blixav as, the, as she put the ball on the floor, but it was the contact the referees didn't like. Sim was happy to tell the referees I was had my hands up. There was no reaching. Hodges also in the game for Australia, starting here in the third quarter. Oh, Man, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, oh, what a play. Move. A little bit of razzle-dazzle. Just the in and out move on the pick and roll was to die for to begin with, but the great finish as well. That was the thing. I mean, she wasn't really finishing in the first half, but she starts off well here in the second. Park Jisoo passes out the bay. And Snell gets in there for the rebound. I'll tell you what, if uh, Park Jisoo has given up the ball in the low post, then Korea's got all sorts of problems because that may be their only scoring option. Hodges, a little mid-range jump shot. Yeah, she missed one of the first half, Jeff, remember, with an air ball. She's not quite got her shooting uh, shooting shoes on yet. Ebsery, another foul. She might head straight to the bench. That's three for her, I think. They're just checking on the bench. You know, that in and out move, and, and then a little oopsie-doo over Park. So coming in uh, for her will be Maddie Garrick. So she gets her first run here for the Asia Cup women. First taste of Asia Cup, yep. I'm sure she's going to give uh, plenty of effort defensively, that's for sure. Going to try and impress the coach a bit. And Bay short with that shot just inside the line. And it just seems to be going from bad to worse right now. Yeah, confidence-wise, yeah. They, and I, it goes back to how much time have you got with the ball to shoot it. And uh, Bay there. An air ball is always typical of the fact there's a lot of pressure on you. Look at his post up in here. Trying to get the ball into Blickhoff's. 
Snell passes it back out to Hodges. She wants to feed it back in. And then Blixavs is uh, called for a foul. She's complaining that Bay. Uh, Bay was pulling and holding her. She might be right. She might have a case for it. Look, see, there's the hold. Little wrap around searching for the wallet. It's called. Uh, Could have gone either way, really. Get arrested for that in London. Bay. I'm not sure if she was passing this in or if she just yeah. fumbled that. It was a handoff. It just went a bit wrong. Another offensive oh, foul. No. Another moving screen. And. Referee's keen to get involved here, Jeff. A couple of quick calls here. And Belinda Snell, uh, she got the pick. You know, the one thing I like about Snell is that, and, it, and it's a lesson to all players, you shoot the ball, but she follows every shot. She comes in looking for her own rebound. Now, maybe that tells you she misses a lot, or she knows she's going to miss a lot, but she is after every offensive rebound when she shoots. Kim pops out. Well, that's a carry about three or four times there. Park on oh. loose from loads. Oh. Uh, Park Jesu, uh, they need any type of offense they can get from her. Was that the first, uh, first field goal since I think so in a long minute, time? Though, yeah, second quarter. Inside the Blixavs on the baseline, good hands from Bay with the block. Uh, Self with a jump shot, should have taken that one to the hoop, had space, time. Kong hands it off to Park Jisu. She just nailed one, just a step inside there. Sim, she's going to pass it back to Park, but she doesn't catch it. Mansfield. Now Maddie Garrick, and she hits her first jumper. Well, there you go. That might be the first, uh, one of the first touches he's had offensively, too, for Garrick. So, good start for her. And it's not going to get any easier. For Korea, when you see the likes of Griffin getting up off the bench, and this time Park Jisoo's attempt rims out. A good rebound from uh, Hodges to Mansfield goes in. Oh, look at it! Gets inside, passes back out to Garrick. Shot clock winding down. Garrick puts oh. it up. Two in a row for Maddie Garrick. I tell you what, Mansfield was the shake and bake merchant, though, Jeff. But once she realized she got in there and she was playing against Park, she said, I've got a bit enough, a bit more than I could chew here. I need to get this out. And it turned into a three pointer. Look at this. Garrick, she had no other option Look. but to launch it. That's a difficult skill. Off, off the, going left is a little easier than going right, but. Put it down, step back. You see a lot of the NBA players, the men's players do that sort of move, but it requires a lot of strength in your arms to get that shot up and in the bucket. And you, you know, and if you don't know Australia, you're over there on the Korea bench and you're thinking, goodness me, this, this player, Garrick, registered a DNP in the first half. She didn't get off the bench yeah. and she's come out and hit two jumpers. You know, but at this level, Jeff, everybody can play. You yeah, know, you're not, you're not putting a number 12 on the bench who's, uh, come to bring the oranges have you I mean you've got a player out there that can put the ball on the floor shoot it it's uh, and Garrick just wants to make sure that uh, the coach notices what she what she can produce you know everybody can uh, empathize with being young on a team and nobody uh, nobody giving you much credit until you get out there a big smile on her face as she comes back on the floor well, Matty Garrick Melbourne boomers What is a boomer? <laughs> the Australians have all these names. I don't know what they are. What is, what is it? Do you know what a boomer is? No. I know the men's team is called what? the boomers. It's not the boomerang. Oh, that must be it. You throw it and it comes right back at you. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, so. Anyway, uh, desperation setting in here for Korea. You got to chip away. Im is going to put up 
Bring a little bit of rain, but doesn't score. And look at Snelly gets it up and to Griffin. Takes the handoff, misses the layup. What was she doing? She, what was she doing? She was trying to be a little fancy. Up. Yeah, exactly. M tries to answer. But you and know what? Coming over the back was Park G. Sue. Who's first back getting the rebound to is Griffin. The, the Griffin who had the layup and the fake handoff. It was uh, fouls on Australia, excuse me. I think I think Australia would be happy if this uh, turns into a running game. Oh yeah, for sure. If it becomes open, yeah, there's no doubt about that. And Park Jisoo gets it down low, banks it in. Griffin dribbling in front and has it taken away, a little careless. Kim just reached in. Now another opportunity for the uh, team from the Far East. Oh, and M kind of led with her left elbow. And there's that defensive pressure. Just uh, you think you got the ball on the floor. You think you got some space. And the defense just, Manny Garrick just cut her off and held her ground too. And now Alana Smith comes back in. So, well, you can't put anybody on the floor that's not going to do damage. That's for sure. That's how strong this team is. I'm surprised the Koreans haven't gone to some sort of zone to test the shooting prowess of this uh, Opals team. Mansfield, well, yeah, yeah, that yeah. might be the answer right there. <laughs> they can hit the jumper. It's called dance the dance, Jeff. And Mansfield just a little, uh, little stutter step, held her ground. Was the defense coming? No, I can unload the 15-footer. And now the dump. And the ball goes over the head into the hands of Mansfield, Whoa. and she escapes the Whoa. defense by going behind her back. And what you got? And now Lana Smith, I'll tell you, she she gets the award uh, for the Razzle Dazzle Award today. Oh, she can dribble. Mansfield. She can dribble. She's quick. She's sprightly. She sees a pass, and she uh, makes the very most of a uh, small stature. Here she is again. Goes behind her back, gets it to Griffin. And then the reach and the foul on Bay. Poor defense from Bay. You know, the, the double team was coming to the baseline. I don't think there was communication, otherwise, she wouldn't have reached. And it's her fourth. That's going from bad to worse slightly. No, I reckon, Jeff, the next 425 career need to hang on, otherwise, this is going to get really uh, some big, big numbers in terms of backdoor. Oh, what a pass! Ooh. Mansfield to Garrett! Outstanding. What a great play. Well worked offense. They are right now under the surgeon's knife. They are really reeling against Australia. The Opals have turned it up in the second quarter and they are pouring it on right now. Cam gets in short. And Good reach from Mansfield. Ball ends up with Alana Smith. She drives in, Ooh. gets it to go. Boy, she knows how to finish, doesn't she? Well, and you know what? Sniff, Smith didn't look that comfortable dribbling. There's the uh, backdoor play. Look at that. Defense nowhere to be seen. Look at this. But she didn't want to dribble very. It wasn't comfortable, was it? But the finish was uh, nice. That'll do. She's shown a couple of times today the ability to finish in difficult circumstances. How many years she got left at Stanford? Uh, she's got two more. Two more years. I mean, and you know what? She's showing that that hustle that you find in a, an American university, that level of play, too. We've seen her hit the three. I wouldn't be surprised to see her name up in the uh, the big lights in a four or five years' time. Kim for three. Go! Yeah, a bit of respite. A bit of respite for the Koreans there. Well, when you think about the players uh, that have played at Stanford, like Agumake, I mean, you get some of the greats. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's a good program. Griffin oh. from the left corner. And, and you know what, Jeff, she just went to that corner, knew fell full well what a job was. Catch it. You know, I've got space. It's going to go up. They're just playing with so much confidence. It's in incredible. And it goes, and the ball 
the miss, but the foul called on Australia. Must be the first time I've seen the Koreans make that type of cut, you know, that little loop around the defender going to the hoop. Kim Dan B there didn't quite get the finish. So coming in for the first time is uh, Kunik. Number 13. So Garrick takes a seat. Didn't do much wrong, did she? No, not at all. I think it's more for the fact that they don't want to risk uh, too many rookies on the floor at one time and give the chance, the opportunity of Korea coming back into it. So just keep the pressure up till the fourth quarter, perhaps. And both free throws good. Kelsey Griffin. I mean, what you lose with, you know, you lose a lot with Leilani Mitchell, but you gain a lot with Griffin, don't you? I mean, she's, she's a tough customer. Here's Griffin from the right. This time she was short. And Kim has it. And the quick pass inside from Bay and another foul called on Australia. Yeah, they won't count that. That was uh, two shots for the bonus, though. So a little, uh, chance for a career to get some points on the board again. Try and get it under this 20-point mark before the end of the quarter. That would be important for them. I mean, in tournament play, you know, it's not a disaster if you if you start with a bad loss. But, uh, and especially against a team like Australia, you still got time to recover. When you think about the long the long term aim of making sure in that top four to get to the uh, my, my, only, my only issue is you know Korea know Australia and New Zealand's coming in. They want to measure themselves against that sort of powerhouse. If they go down by 30. And uh, it's going to say something we're not really at that level yet. And, you know, if they play somebody else tough in the tournament, are they going to have memories of this game? Who knows? And now Park. I don't see a foul Fouls there. Levy. I don't see a foul there at all. The only foul that can happen is if Park has actually turned, touched Levy going over the screen. But I didn't see that. I saw a more contact with the screener than anything else. They're already in the bonus. So Levy will go to the line. Both teams in the bonus, in fact. There's uh, Cheryl Chambers on that coaching staff. And Levy makes the first. And makes the second as well. So it genuine uh you have to be excited if you're an australian opals fan watching this team start this asia cup in this fashion they have come out and really shifted quickly into a high gear kim for korea strokes the three where's that been yeah exactly well, they've not had open shots have they that's the thing that was wide open look at this post up here down low from uh, alana smith alana smith again yeah they just quick to get the big down the floor and post up alana smith Sets the pick. Oh, beautiful pass. Oh, what a pass for coming. And Griffin just knows where to be on the floor, doesn't she? I'm, I'm, not, sure what, I'm not sure what happened to Kang. Kang just dropped to the floor. It made the shot a lot easier for Griffin, that's for sure. Boy, they're just putting on a master class right now. Now Kim drives. Good job. Put her under a little bit of pressure from Levy. Put her off the shot. No look over to coming. And my oh. understanding is that coming, by the way, is, is actually Blitzkovs. Yep, Blitzkovs. She just hasn't filed the paperwork to change her name with FIBA. And it goes. And Lana Smith passes it out. She is uh, coming, has married Blitzkovs' sister. Excuse me, sis Blitzkovs' brother, who plays in the Australian uh, Football League, Aussie Rules Football. Mark. For G Long, we got timeout. Jeff, and looking at uh, one of the newcomers in the game for the Opals just now, Alice Kunek came in for an offensive rebound, and it goes back to the tenacity that a team like Australia bring to a game. You know, growing up when I was playing, 
the rule is never let anybody block you out. You know, just go to every offensive rebound as much as you can. And, and that was Koenig's philosophy there. She got boxed out on the weak side, but was relentless and kept going to the ball. And that's what the uh, that's what makes this team so good. Bay has eight points for Cree leading the way. I didn't say this earlier, but I was talking to uh, Jan Sterling and, and Mariana Tolo. She started the game, but she does have a calf problem. And you wonder if that might be they're oh, yeah. not going to take a chance and uh, they're going to let her sit. I did wonder that, and that makes perfect sense now. Rest of what's the point? It's a you know 24-point game right now. But it's been Smith, Mansfield in the second half, especially. Maddie Garrick has uh, come out and played well. Cumming has been exceptional. Griffin has been terrific. Um, you know, it's uh, some new faces in the uh, Opals setup, so to speak, that have really done the business today. And they tried to get that play right at the end of the shot clock. Couldn't quite pull it off. deck getting to the basket and I think the fouls on Levy no yeah. it's Griffin for reach I guess the graphic Good penetration from uh, Sim there just putting pressure on the defense and a uh, question you asked about a minute or so where was this in the first half well I don't think the Australian defense has, has relaxed anything I think the Koreans now there's a sense of desperation about their play they have to play harder they have to play harder just to really be competitive in the game and then she's getting uh, a lot more positive play from them. Derek is going to come back in for Griffin. A little press here down the floor, Jeff. One, two, one, one. Trying to change the tempo slightly. Try to get a turnover. Kunick. And now the travel called on coming. So a new wrinkle from Korea. Yeah, coming just. I think she felt isolated there, wanted to get out of it with a dribble. The referees deemed that uh, she moved the pivot foot before the ball went down, and she'll come out straight away. Levy back in. Oh, sorry, not Levy. Uh, Ebsery? Ebsery, yep. Yeah. Well, the pass right through their hands. So they get the turnover they want, and they turn it right back over. And Koenig launches it. And Lana Smith can't chase it down in time. You know what? It was a no chance ball. There's no way that was going to get saved, but you know, credit to her. She chased it down, gave it everything. Those lost cause balls are always uh, good to see. Coaches love to see it when the players go after it. And see him again. Breakdown against Levy. Maybe just caught short there for a little speed, perhaps. You know, maybe just do you fancy maybe the Australians have taken their uh, concentration levels down slightly? Lady won't be happy with that getting beaten that easily. Yeah, I think it was on her, not on Smith. So, yeah, I don't know where the foul was on it, but the point was she got beaten at that top of the key, which then oh, sorry, okay. somebody else has to come and help, you see. It's, so Sim is at the line. And makes two. Back to a 20-point deficit. And now another, almost another turnover. And Korea appealing, asking for some help. No, nope, they're not going to get it reversed. Korea is so quick into the double team. That's causing a few problems for the Opals. And now the five-second violation. So Australia are uh, looking a little vulnerable to full court pressure yeah and that pass was no this pass was a, gonna be a long half court pass to smith and she wasn't ready for it so S snell will come back in as uh, maddie garrick sits down 11 turnovers for korea seven now for australia and two of those in the last two minutes is it yes indeed kim inbounds it to kim And it's 
see Korea just trying to find a way back into the game. 12 seconds on the shot clock, 21 on the game clock here in the third quarter. Snell, wide open, go! Hey, that's a pretty fast win. Snell inbounds, the little penetration draw the defense in. And then she just goes to the corner for the J. And back to a 23-point lead with that three ball. And the answer with a two from uh, the point guard, Park, or the shooting guard in this lineup. So that brings right at the end of the quarter. It's 57-34, Australia on top. So it did not count, or did it? I don't think it did. No, I thought the referee signaled to the uh, score at the two points, so maybe it's just not going up on the scoreboard here. Maybe they're trying to clarify if it was a three or a two. Should be So these are the third quarter highlights, at least for Australia, because they have uh, stretched their advantage to 21 points. They have indeed counted that last basket. It was slow to go up on the board, but it finally has, and it's 57-36 in favor of the Opals, who kind of had a statement game today. And the only thing... Uh, Perhaps uh, right now that might be causing a little bit of concern uh, for that Australia coaching staff would be that press break because they've turned it over a couple of times. In fact, I think they've turned it over three times when you include they weren't able to inbound it once on the five second violation. So, well, you know, you yeah, might be right. I mean, maybe it's uh, exposed a little weakness early in the tournament, which they can now go to uh, practice and work on tomorrow morning. So Korea will start with possession. You've got Mansfield as well as uh, Ebsery in that backcourt for Australia. Bay, remember, has the four fouls for Korea. She's in number 10. And offensive foul, and is that it for her? Well, there was a play just before that where Sim caught somebody under the bucket on a screen that was a moving screen, so the referees must have drawn their attention to it. So they fouled the, out. Watch. You see the replay here. It's, yeah, yeah, it's not much movement, but the fact is it was, uh, it was rough. Nelly back to Griffin wide open from the arc gets a lot of rim but doesn't get any love from the rim ball goes out of bounds and some long looks over there on the faces of those Korean players as you can see they're right now on the receiving end. They need some shots to fall. Kim drives. He's got to make that one. Griffin. Edzery puts it on the deck, drives in. Nice move. I think the referee's going to give him two shots here for Edzery, although the foul was on the dribble. 
She did manage to get a shot up, but it looked like it was continuation of you. Uh, you look at it again. Next game for Kelsey, uh, sorry, for Katie Ray Evzeri in foul trouble. Minor foul trouble, I guess, for the third quarter. Evzeri was in that Olympic team uh, last year in Rio de Janeiro that went unbeaten in the preliminary round, although they had uh, some close shaves, and then they lost to Serbia in the quarterfinals. Serbia were then the uh, defending champions from Europe, defending European champions, rather. Kim drives in. And the pass to Kim. Kim, the other Kim, gets it to Sim. And Griffin knocks it off hand, uh, Kim's hands. Took the first half about making jump shots wide open. They got their opportunities, couldn't make it. Snell had a foot on the line. Oh. That'll be a two. And that's the difference in quality right there. Isn't it just a split second difference between the two players and uh, Belinda Snell? How many times has she sat in the gym just shooting jump shot day after day? Park puts it up and draws the foul from Ebsery. It's the second little jump shot Park's made. Uh, had a much better second half than the first, that's for sure. She's uh, playing with a bit more confidence either off the pick and roll. Defense doesn't show, keeping an eye on Park. So three-point play for Korea. But obviously, they can't trade baskets. They've got to get stops and points. And now they do get a stop. And the question is, will they get a basket? Good play by Kim to get rid of it. Another turnover. Kim now for three. She bricks it. But Park Jisoo back in. Oh, puts it up. And another three-point play opportunity. What a tough shot. Off balance, leaning backwards. Just managed to get it in the right direction. Nice little friendly roll. And they can talk over this press now, Jeff. It's up tomorrow morning. Well, Long's going to speak about it. 7.55 remaining. So, yeah, perhaps a chink in the armor of the Opals is uh, no way. No way. It's you a one-two so? it's a one two, two press. You know, okay. you've got to just get a little organized as he's trying to here. Okay, so it's just a matter they can just Yeah, yeah. Let's level, go over this again. Here's how we're gonna break it. Yeah, this is not twelve year old basketball. This is professionals playing. It's, but you gotta you know, you might get away with it in the Asia Cup, but you wanna make that next step against the USA, for example. You can't come out and not be able to break a press. No, and that's exactly right. It's not rocket science breaking a press, that's for sure. You know, you've got to You've got to be, uh, I think it's more. It's taken the Australians more by surprise. I'd be surprised if this is a, a factor later in the tournament, i.e. if teams put the press on and Australia just cough it up as easily as this. But what we've seen four times this uh, second half, they haven't even got the ball above halfway. Back in, goes up, corrals it, but it's wrapped up, but it's jump ball, possession arrow. So we'll see if that timeout had the effect right now. Send the middleman to the floor. Oh, goodness me. And look at that. And Korea missed the layup. Park, though, steps outside and puts up an air ball. And that's got to be frustrating for... Uh, for oh, Korea. That ball hit the net. That pass hit the net, their own net. You don't have to see that, that's for sure. I've never seen that. <laughs> at least not in that fashion. Beautiful move. Uh, look at Mansfield. She's got the left hand and she's got the right hand. Yeah, and a nice soft touch with it as well.
Park Jisoo cross court. And out of bounds, good hands from Belinda Snell goes off. Somebody shot, leave it. Of Kim. Look at this. Oh, yeah. A little hesitation. You think I'm uh, beautiful. One dimensional, no way. Oh, I can do it all. She's been phenomenal in the second half. She's been good value for money. And even I'd watch her play. I mean, she's tough. She played a good game today. Out of all the uh, Australian players. You won't pay much to watch anybody play, so that's. <laughs> Pretty big compliment for uh, Miss Mansfield. That's not true. You're always looking for a freebie. <laughs> he almost, you, you probably wonder if the, the great coach wonders if they should have just gone into this full court press <laughs> earlier in the game. Wow, you're right. It's it's. And you know, it's been fun to watch, too. I mean, it's not often you see a press cause so much havoc to such a good team. I, mean, I have seen you take delight in this, by the way. Is this a little British, no, no. Uh, Australia no, seen, no, no, rivalry coming from you? like to see the Australians struggle? No, no, I've seen that. No, no, no. <laughs> You're the one that laid the, the, the gauntlet down by saying you think this might be an, an issue for Australia late in the tournament. And I, and I, you know, my view is it won't be. But, you know, when I saw them come out of the timeout and, and throw a pass to hit their own no, net, I'm thinking. I know, no. I'm just kidding. No, you won't. <laughs> I, you never know, Jeff. You might be right. It may, it may well be a factor, but it's fun to see a team put up the pressure and get to this spot quickly. They're a feisty team career. So, Australia looking to lower the boom. They're up 63-41. And Garrick, oh, another yeah. three. And the only thing I can say is, why did it take her to get into the game in the second half? She's been phenomenal. Yeah, I, I think the rotations would have put her maybe as uh, last coming in, last 11 or 12 coming in the game. But uh, fair enough, she's had a good game. Park drives in, misses with the left, and Alana Smith, another rebound. And look at Mansfield, just kind of dance around the trouble. And that was good foul for Park. Just stopped the easy the two. reach. Yeah, yeah. She didn't really play the ball though. She held on to uh, Belinda Snell. She went by. That's flirting sure, with an yeah. unsportsmanlike there. Seen it called for less. He called the crowbar foul. You know, you just stick your arm out like a crowbar and just run into it. How about coming? And you just, you know, the more and more you, you watch this oval team, the more and more you like them. Here's Mansfield again. Whips it to Garrick, but it goes off her hands and out of bounds. Yeah, it's a pass that she should have caught, but it was a poor pass from uh, Mansfield in the end. All those ones you, you know you don't want to catch because you're, you're getting ready to shoot the ball. She's already made one big J. And Kim. Start to make her move, and she fumbled the ball away right into the hands of Mansfield. Oh, nice move. Griffin brings it back out. Not, not in a rush. Mansfield again. Here's Griffin. Avoids uh, the foul. No, she doesn't. She goes up and gets the foul, makes the shot. Right. That was, was she avoided a collision. That was just full of my leader, wasn't it? Just chasing shadows the Korean defense. Any shot you want, you're going to get it. And uh, Mansfield, Griffin, just uh, leading them a merry dance through that lane. 27 points, the advantage. Hard to believe that Korea came back to lead this game 17 to 16. Yeah. Oh, you at one point. Look at the difference. Since, since then, it's, uh, what is it, 24 to uh, 53. That's a big, big turnaround. That was, I think, three minutes into the second quarter. They didn't start the second quarter with Park, did they? Well, Park short that time, it goes out of bounds. The funny thing is, Jeff, it. with a player the size of Park, you know, sizably much taller than any other play player on the Korean team, there's very little low post work they've gone to. They haven't really uh, dominated in the low post. Sim chases it. Beautiful hustle. Derek. And the trouble is, if you can't score, you can't get into the press, can you? 
So we haven't seen that press for two or three minutes. The Australians have uh, been opened the lead. Off the hook. Yep. Smith again doesn't finish this time. He's going to hustle back. Park Jisoo again goes up and everything under pressure, Jeff. Yep. That's the important defense. If you can apply pressure on the ball, you're always going to have a chance of winning. Good reach that time, but ball goes off of Park Jisoo. Yeah, Lana Smith just caught on her heels trying to catch that ball, leaning backwards there for the defense. Could just sneak by and deflect it. you got to come and meet that ball. And the pass collected there by Sim. They break, and then Park kind of uh, outran the ball. Nevertheless, they've got it. And the dump, and Park did a good job catching it. She stays with it. And she bends over. Well, if you don't make your shots, you're going to get buried in a sea of green shirts all around you on any missed shot. And uh, Park got a rebound, and there was no way she was going to be allowed to get it up again. Surprised the referees haven't given her two shots for that. And good hands, almost the steal. Park, and just a soft touch. She's got the tools, there's no doubt about it, but. You're going to need more than one player yeah, against a team that, like Australia. And that's a good point. That's a good point. At this level, against this team. Sim fakes the pass, draws the foul on Levy. 3.57 remaining, so Australia really in command here. And if they could go back and do it all over again that second quarter, you wonder what Korea would do. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's you know, is it was it a run that was going to happen at any time in the game? That's that's my question. It's pretty the, pretty the, typical of Australia women's basketball. Well, there's a gulf between the these run two is teams. Run is going to come. Yeah, yeah, there's a gulf, so it could happen at any time. And maybe Korea did well to stay in the game to 12 minutes. But I always say, you know, the first game, always nervous starts for everybody. It's never easy kicking off a tournament. And here's the press again, Jeff. Coming. Able to get it to Levy. And she gets it across midcourt. So it wasn't really wasn't comfortable. It wasn't pretty, was it? No. Well, you think they, they played the second half without Tolo, too, which is an, an incredible fact that she has on any game with her height. So uh, credit to this Australian team that they've kept the pressure up. They've increased the lead. I mean, to be fair, I mean, she wasn't really at her best anyway when she was in there. She wasn't really being that influential. A, so dis a disservice, Jeff. I think at that height, sometimes you don't have to be m do too much to be influential. If you're talking about numbers, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah good point. So I think uh, Olaf thinks this game is won, so he sat down. A relaxed pose, that's for sure. <laughs> He's like, do you want to walk back to the hotel or do you want to... It's really, it's just right around the corner. Choosing the menu, yeah, for dinner tonight. Their hotel is... Oh, no, ours is closer than theirs. Yeah, it now, is but not by much. Spin move. Miss. And Blick size with another board. Yeah, just uh, offensive rebounds have been a problem for Korea. I think any team that plays this Opals team will have problems. There's a back screen. I love back screens in basketball. So effective. Surprising how many teams don't use them. Kunik.
part, and she's she's been short on a few of her jumpers today. The ball goes out. Yeah, she's been better inside the arc, and she a little 15 to 18 foot range has been a comfort zone beyond the three. I think this whole Korean team has really struggled beyond the arc. Well, it's not going to really, you know, be easy for them in the next game either. They take on the two two time defending champs, Japan for Korea. Yeah, and we we think Japan might be a little under strength, right? That would be a fair statement, good move there from Likovs. They might, but at the end of the day... Uh, That'll be a matchup, Jeff. It could be a similar situation in Australia. There's cer certain names missing from this Australia team, and then we might... Maybe we're going to be surprised by Japan. Mm. Uh, their third game will be against the Philippines, and it could be that that would come down to an all-or-nothing uh, for one of those two teams uh, moving on. Well, I mean, I guess the theory of this is you, you want to avoid New Zealand and China in the opposite group, therefore finishing three or four is not what you want, isn't it? Top two is probably what these teams want to finish. In the other group, you've got New Zealand, Chinese Taipei, uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and China. Kong for three, and that's good. And I think if you look at those teams, I think the De Democratic Republic of Korea will be the weakest team. Chinese Taipei, perhaps underneath that. And nice move, and they're going to count it. Jeff, that's the story of this game, hasn't it? In, in many elements, the, the ability of the Australian girls to, to post up get the defender on the back look at this little lob pass the defenders it's right behind Sarah Blickoffs and it's just a pivot low and one dribble use the backboard sweet touch not, not much more you could do defensively there no to be honest well, in your career you all the work is done before the pass and you got to get in front of the uh, offensive yeah, person in terms of where she was I mean I didn't see her really go after her. no no you, you've got to be very physical and you look at these Australian girls they're much bigger much more physical much uh, stronger and for this another post up coming here and the jump shot from Kunick so she gets on the board Soft touch there, good skill set there, a couple of times on the floor. It's on line, and it's good from him. She really didn't show up today. She's showing up now, but... Well, and that's it, isn't it? With the, the pressure's off, uh, they can play with a little, uh, re little more relaxed at 25 down. It seems strange, but it happens. And for, uh, more productive. And Alana Smith drives in, and the reach. She's relentless, isn't she? Relentless. You know, she had the jump shot, the three-point shot. Didn't want to take it. But when she put the ball on the floor, that shoulder was down. And uh, Quack could do nothing about it. So we talked about Korea's next opponents. Australia, on the other hand, are going to play... The Philippines next. They'll be big favorites in that one. And then they'll finish up in what may be a classic against Japan. A classic. Well, well, look forward to that one. El Clasico. <laughs> I think all these games are classic, Jeff. I mean, this is this is top-notch basketball here. Well, the reach. Kong inside. Park has it and just takes it right to the rack. Well, that was the helter-skelter game there, wasn't it? And he got, the, got out of it pretty well, Korea. Back to 24. Lixos. And she powers her way up. Doesn't make it, but follows the miss. Misses again. It's one thing that we've uh, seen from all of the Australian uh, bigs and power forwards is they don't hesitate to put the ball in the deck and go to the basket no. even from no, behind were, the three-point line yeah they're, they're all tooled up they're well skilled they can uh, they can play at any level you know it's symptomatic of a, a program that concentrates on skills Jeff not shooting skills <laughs> I was just <laughs> gonna say 
And offensive foul called on quite good position, Tessa Levy. Yeah, it's good defense from Levy. I'm not sure it was the right call, but uh, nice work from that. You know what Quack's done well here? Took the ball to the hoop hard. As Kunick just presses off, obviously, in the last uh, nine seconds. Nine more seconds of torment for Korea and Australia. Will they even attempt the shot, or are they just going to call off the dogs? Call off the dingoes. I think they're going to run one last play. Kunek puts up a jumper. And that is all she wrote. I think Kunek wants the free throws. The whistle so went, I'm was sure. A, I did hear a whistle, but was that from the crowd? I heard the whistle in the first half, too, so I'm not sure whether the, the whistle goes to the end of the game here at Fever Asia. 78-54, anyway. Australia get off and running their first ever FIBA Women's Asia Cup game. They win it big over Korea. Well, the looks of smiles, uh, happy faces, but also uh, perhaps acknowledgement that there's a long way to go for Australia here in this Asia Cup women, but you wouldn't bet against them after that performance. No, and they look they look tough, Jeff. They look like the best team in this tournament, no doubt about it. And uh, they're going to get challenged a few times, I'm sure, but uh, everybody now, the, the bar has been set very, very high by this Australian team. Because the Korean team's not a bad team. They're a good team. They will walk off despondently, but uh, they live to fight another day. So, from a scoring standpoint for Australia, Alana Smith had the 13, Kelsey Griffin 15. So quite uh, an Asia Cup women debut for Kelsey Griffin. She had the 15 points, 11 points for Belinda Snell. And again, showed the great leadership. 13 and seven, uh, seven rebounds for Smith. 10 points for Maddie Garrick, hugely impressive in the second half uh, when she came off the bench. She didn't play in the first half. And uh, hit four of her five shots from the floor. And from a turnover standpoint, if you're dissecting this, Tessa Levy had four to go with her two points. So that's an area where Mansfield had six points, five assists. She was dazzling in the second half. I wouldn't say she was great in the first half, but in the second half, she just found a comfort zone and was hugely impressive. Blixad has had the six points, five rebounds. Tolo, again, she started, had the five points, three rebounds, but we think she rested because of a calf problem. But yeah, I mean, coming, hard to believe she played just 13 minutes uh, because she was influential. She had the five points, the two rebounds for Korea. Park Jisoo, the 10 points and the eight rebounds, but she can't do it all on her own. And uh, they're going to have a tough game next time out against Japan. Eight points, five rebounds for Bay. She fouled out. 11 points for Sim and seven for Park Hana. So, any closing thoughts on that one? Uh, no, Nick. good start from the Australians. Nervous start maybe to start the game. That's why it was so close. Huge goal between these two teams, Jeff. I think if they played again, I don't think the result would be any different. Uh, the Koreans have got a long way to go outside of uh, Park Ji Su, finding some more superstars. But uh, the Australians keep on producing this uh, long line conveyor belt of talent coming through. So all smiles from Australia. A job well done. See Kelsey Griffin with all the smiles. And this was, uh, again, the dazzling play of Mansfield. And it's always great to win, but especially when you play in the FIBA Women's Asia Cup for the very first time.
So one last time, Australia win it 78-54 over Korea here at the FIBA Asian Women's Cup. Thanks for watching.